My first question would be, I, I'd like to relate it to you. So I've seen your previous speeches before on YouTube. You are a specialist in comparative religion. So when you like uh, compare Islam and other religion like Hinduism, like quoting scriptures from Bhagavad Gita or something, like don't you think there is a possibility to misinterpret it and provide misguidance to those who doesn't belong to that faith? What's and, your name, brother? Pardon? Your name? Shashi Varman. Okay. And Shashi. If, if there are, it is proven that there is a misinterpretation in your speech, does that mean that you failed to carry out your duty as a Muslim professional? The brother asked a very good question, a very relevant question to the topic. I'd like to thank him. His question is that I'm a specialist of comparative religion. I prefer calling myself a student of comparative religion. And when I quote scriptures of others, other religion, like whether it be the uh, Bhagavad Gita, whether Veda, whether Bible, and if I misinterpret that scripture, then isn't it wrong as a Muslim? Totally wrong. I agree with you. That's the reason after every lecture of mine, we have question answer session. Most of the religious speakers, whether it be Hindu, whether it be Christian, whether it be Muslim, most of the majority, more than 90%, after this speech, they have no question answer session. Sheikh Didat was the first one who started, and now, mashallah, many of us. After every question, after every lecture, we have a question answer session. Why? So that if you disagree with us, you are open to ask the question. In the question answer time, if any speaker, including myself, if the questioner proves that my interpretation is wrong, I, if, I, if they prove to me first, I will say, I am sorry, I will take it back. If I make a mistake, as a Muslim, compulsory, I would apologize. I would first say, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your scripture. Inshallah, in future, I will not quote it. Never in my life of 25 years of dawah, more than one, has a single question, mashallah, I can make mistakes. I'm a human being. I'm not perfect. No human being is perfect. Not a single question ever quoted me anything and proved me wrong. Alhamdulillah. I can be wrong. I can be wrong. Therefore, we say, ask the question. If he poses a question to me, I will counter quote him and give him the quotation from his scholars. I will quote. What does Swami Vivekananda say? I will quote. So we the intellectual. That is the reason what we say, let's come for a debate. Friendly debate, no problem. But I'll only debate with someone who has some standing, not with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You understand? You know, if I can get a million people for my talk, largest gathering, even if we get 2%, 20,000, I will debate you. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry, I cannot. So what my reason is, if you want to debate me, you should at least be able to gather minimum 20,000 for your speech. If I can get 2 million, you at least get 2%. Okay? If you can get 20,000 for your lecture, I'm willing to debate with you. If you cannot get, you give it to someone who can get. And there are many Hindu speakers in the world. There are many Christian speakers in the world who get 100,000 and more. In India, many people. You know Shishi Ravi Shankar. He gets audiences of 100,000. I debated with him. And you know the outcome of that. Have you seen that debate? Yeah. What was the outcome? It was. It what? It wasn't as I, as I expected. Sorry? It wasn't as I expected, yeah. Oh, you, it Look. wasn't as you expected. Yeah. But did I break any rules of the debate? Pardon? Did I break any rules of the debate? No. Did I not answer all his questions? No. Did he answer my questions? No. No. One of the most famous Hindu preachers in the world, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Many people call him God. Uh, but, but, sir, uh, how about Sadhguru? I guess he destroyed some of your points, I guess. Sadhguru from the okay. Foundation. Okay, arrange for a dialogue, I will debate him. You arrange, I will debate him. Sadhguru is a famous person, ask him. I will debate him. There are some people who have taken his speeches and given answers, some people not himself. If he wants, let him arrange. No problem, I will debate him. Okay, because I know he's famous. Any famous personality, if he wants to debate, I don't want to debate him. He wants to debate me, open, any topic. Any topic on comparative religion. 
Hinduism and Islam, no problem. Okay, I'm welcome. And if he points out anything in, in my speech, which I said, which is out of context, or which is not as per the Hindu scripture, I'll apologize. I will give him from where I got. All my research are not from non-Hindu scholars, from Hindu scholars. I give the reference. So most of the speakers say, yes, Zakir is right, but... Then the but comes. Many Hindus say, when you hear your speech in two hours, I've learned what I've not learned in 40 years of my life. Because in my speech, I give references. Did Shri Shri Ravi Shankar give any reference in his speech? Even one reference he gave. Did he give a single reference, brother? No. In my speech, how many references were there? So who's more authentic, a person who gives a reference, or a person who doesn't give a reference? He could have kept a chit. There's no objection. In a debate, you can have notes in front of you, right or wrong? I don't have notes. He can have notes. Ask if Shri Shri Ravi Shankar will have a second debate with me. Will he have? Even if you give him a million dollars, he will not have. I guess he will. But if he doesn't debate you, I'm sure one day I will. Yeah. Most welcome. The day you can get 20,000 people for your audience, I will debate you. Cool. Now what you can do, question answer. Did I answer your question or not? Yeah, you did. Thank you. Very satisfactory? Yes. I'm very happy. Thank you for accepting it. And may Allah guide you. And I'll pray for you that you come to the truth, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, you're most welcome. Iman is the negligence of Salah.